So we just wanted to jump on here and make a quick video thanking everyone for all the love and support, the comments, the encouragement, the prayers, the private messages, uh, the suggestions, recommendations, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the nice things you said about me. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. All <laughs> the things. All the things. It's very encouraging. You did get called some names. Well, some of them were uh, selfish for not shaving my head with yours, but I ignore those. I get it. Some of it. them were feminine products. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they were. <laughs> Uh, anyway, it's been fun. Yes, so it's been fun. So we wanted to make a quick video kind of catching you up mm -hmm. on our story and the video that most people have that's brought them here is about two years old. It's been so cool because everybody's like, I know this is two years ago. How's she doing? Mm -hmm. And I would love to give like a happy story, but yeah, we're still here. <laughs> yeah, we're still here. So this and it's been a sweet like second wind of encouragement that I still need because mm. I'm still fighting. Mm -hmm. So this video will bring you up to speed on where we're at in her cancer journey mm -hmm. and as well as who we are. My name is Robert and this is my wife, Christy. Hey. And Chris they know me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. 1.5 million views on this video. It's been crazy. Uh, it had like, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand just over the last two years. And yeah. then just this week, it's like you know over a million just this week alone and lots of new followers. So welcome all of you and thank thank you so much for the kind words. It's been amazing reading those comments. But so Christy is a stay at home mom, uh, mm -hmm. homeschools our four children. We have children ranging from the ages of 10 to 18. Uh, so we have a nice variety in there. And I am a bivocational minister and do a lot of work online to share the gospel and that's what this page is intended for mm -hmm. is to to share biblical truth and and just encourage people who are believers as well so i have instagram of course facebook where you're at she has instagram and facebook i'll put links somewhere mm -hmm. down below this video to to all that stuff so you can follow us on the various social media platforms but we wanted to bring you up to date on on the battle so our story like most people who are battling with cancer, kind of happened abruptly, mm -hmm. um, but it was in the middle of, 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 of quite the season. Um, I was having uh, some job changes and Christy was experiencing symptoms and actually didn't tell me anything because... The stress was real, y'all. <laughs> she, she it was to, a season. It was a season. She didn't want to stress me out, which I appreciate. I don't know why she wouldn't tell well, me. I also didn't know if it was what I was thinking or if my body was just responding to stress differently. Mm -hmm. So I was internally observing mm. without putting extra stress on my man. And I appreciate that so much, but please <laughs> tell me. I'm glad I could have spared you all this stress, you know? <laughs> yeah. So, so she was having some symptoms and, um, finally she mentioned them to me. We were actually at weekend to remember, which is a, a mm -hmm. marriage conference, Christian marriage conference. And she says, our van caught on fire, y'all. Our van caught on fire there too. That's another story in itself. But um, she she told me she says I've been experiencing some symptoms. Um, a friend of mine, I told a friend of mine about. She told a friend of hers about it, and her friend uh, basically booked her an appointment at a doctor. Is that right? Basically, yeah. They she jumped in the sisterhood and wasn't playing. And she's <laughs> like, look, I don't care. PayPal you the money, scheduled the appointment. There's no excuses. <laughs> yeah. So thankfully, and thank God for her boldness, um, mm -hmm. uh, she went to the doctor's appointment and they did some blood work and all that stuff. And of course, we eventually get the call saying, hey, you need to come in. Well, it was a woman situation. So they perform women procedures. And then three days later... It's, yeah, like right away we got the call. Mm -hmm. So we head down to the doctor's office, and I, I, I can't tell you. Uh, I was going. He was working, right? Mm -hmm. And I already office, knew. Yeah. So I'm like, babe, don't worry about it. It's fine. They're just going to tell me, and it'll be fine. And so that's what I thought. But I get in the room, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm here by myself. And I hear him. <laughs> My wife's back here. I just, I, my wife's back here. Where's she at? And like, darn near kicked the door down. But he came, he, he beat the doctor. So I didn't have to receive the news alone. Yep. Yeah. We, I just sat down. Doctor walks in there and you could tell by the look on their face immediately that it was bad news. And 
uh, you know, you see that stuff in movies, you, you hope it never happens to you. And when it does, you have no idea how you're going to handle it. And the room spun. I remember feeling dizzy. I'm sure you felt all the same things. And I remember kind of stumbling out to the parking lot dazed and just trying to call my mom. <laughs> the only person I could think to call was mom uh, and, and just tell her and just drop this load on her. Um, of course, at that point, we still didn't really know what was in store. Um, so she was diagnosed with stage 2B. Is that right? At that time? Mm -hmm. Stage like 2B. 2B3. Mm -hmm. They had just changed the staging yeah. process. Stage 2B3, uh, cervical cancer. And um, they were going to schedule her for chemotherapy and radiation, you know, standard treatment protocols. But it was her conviction, our conviction, that we have the tumor removed first. Well, yeah. At that time, standard of care is radiation chemo, shrink it down to see how it responded, and then operate if need be. And I'm like, oh, well, we weren't interested in chemo and radiation. If it's contained to the cervix, just give me a hysterectomy and cut it all out. Which made that sense made to me. That made sense to us. <laughs> and yeah, so so we did that, and that was uh, the surgery was on September 11th of 2019. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, that's stressful enough. Surgery went well. Everything went good. Um, it was a couple days later or so, week or so. Time Timeline's a little fuzzy all this time later. Well, the recovery, yeah. So we didn't, it's contained to the cervix. There's nothing to discuss. My five-hour surgery was great for me. I was sleeping. My baby was panicked in the waiting room. But... At my six week checkup is when they had the surgical pathology report. And so he didn't come with me. We didn't think anything of it. My mom was with me. We're just going to get the catheter out or whatever. I didn't even under, I just thought it was serious regardless. Like they've been talking chemo and radiation all this time, but she was like, we had the whole board meeting about you today and please hear me. And it was like rare and aggressive. And I'm just, you know, that's what they all say. And so I took the little paperwork. My mom's crying. Just take the chemo. And I'm like, oh, hold on. We're going to research. Mm -hmm. And so I Googled. Oof. And as you know, never Google your illness because it's... It can go either way. Like, yeah. don't Google because it's worst case scenario. But when you're facing the worst case scenario, now we need to know what we're dealing with. Mm. Is how I felt. Right. Um, so she was at that point diagnosed with carcinosarcoma. Mm -hmm. um, in her lymph nodes. Mm -hmm. So that indicates that the tumor that was removed was carcinosarcoma and what was remaining in her lymph nodes, which did not show up in the scans, mm -hmm. was also carcinosarcoma. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, I have a quote here from uh, the gscproject.com and it says, gynecological carcinosarcoma is a rare and aggressive cancer found primarily in the ovaries and uterus and can also originate in the fallopian tubes and vagina. GSC is also known as MMMT or malignant mixed malarian tumor. Mm -hmm. Carcinosarcoma is unique in that it contains two types of cells, carcinomaceous and sarcomaceous. GSC is rare, fewer than 1,000 cases per year. Because carcinosarcoma is so rare, there has been limited research or clinical trial, trials that focus on GSC. Unfortunately, this is where the cures will be found. Little or no research results in no cures or effective treatments for us. So uh, that's a reality. Mm -hmm. A thousand cases a year. Every, mm -hmm. every doctor that we've spoken to has very little experience mm -hmm. with it. Uh, we decided to go to the what we considered and researched to be a, a top cancer center, you know, within a reasonable distance, which is uh, Moffitt Cancer Center in Tampa, Florida. And even they had only had. Uh, but before that, we did want to explore natural options. And we have an integrative cancer center here. And he had cured a friend of mine mm -hmm. naturally. You know, she followed the protocol. So I was on my way to see him. And he straight up said, I've never seen this type of cancer before. I don't recommend you go naturally. Yeah. So 
you know, our, our initial goal. And if people have mentioned in the comments, yes. to try this or that. And Chris beats cancer. I mean, yeah, Chris beats cancer. Like we, we researched all that stuff, you know, we're not, uh, we're not crazy, but at the same time, you know, we wanted to explore all options and make sure we mm -hmm. knew what we were getting into. Chris wasn't dealing with carcinosarcoma. No, no. And not many people are, have been. So, um, it's a very, very small group of people. So it was a scary time for us. Whenever you hear rare and aggressive mm -hmm. and cancer in the mm -hmm. same sentence, it's, mm -hmm. it's flooring. Um, so Moffitt, we had loved ones recommend Moffitt. Mm -hmm. It's in mm -hmm. our region. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, so Moffitt's about two hours from us. Hour and a half. Yep. So she began her treatments on November 12th, 2019. And basically you did. Well, also, I'm just going to say, because of the type of cancer, it's an appointment that we all try to avoid, ladies. Talking to y'all. And so it had been put off a long time. Like probably last pregnancy or so, and life gets busy and mamas get tied up. So we knew that this cancer could have probably been growing for several years. Mm -hmm. So we didn't feel like we had time to play around and exhaust options. Right. That's true too. So there was a sense of urgency mm -hmm. in the whole thing. Very mm -hmm. aggressive. The the time frame that has mm -hmm. been incubating, if you will, mm -hmm. uh, the fact that they found it in the it lymph nodes, meaning it was spreading, um, was incredibly scary. So, mm -hmm. so we started going with Moffitt. She started chemotherapy in uh, November of nineteen. Mm -hmm. um, no, I did a chemo, but it was. <laughs> It was like a radiation sensitizing chemo. So it wasn't so intense. Ah, I didn't. Okay. I didn't. Know and that. so I started with the radiation treatment. Like I did a chemo infusion once every week or three weeks, mm -hmm. but it was to assist the radiation. I had to do 30 rounds of radiation. Mm. 30 rounds of radiation. Like Monday through Friday. Every day. She would, she would go two hours there. Two hours back. My village came, y'all. Thankfully, we had a fantastic group of people from her homeschool co-op, from our church, who mm -hmm. all stepped up to give mm -hmm. her rides. And I think she may have driven herself one time mm -hmm. out, of, out of the whole 30 days and, and more. Um, so thank everyone for mm -hmm. that. If you're not in a church or plugged into a community like that, you, you need to be. It was uh, special. We couldn't have done it without mm -hmm. them. Um, so she always had someone with her and treatment days were long. Uh, you had the radiation, you had the chemo, the chemo would take, I mean, 12 hours. It was a 12 hour day. By the time you left, by the time you got back, um, you know, you'd leave before the sun came up and you'd leave after the sun set. So, so you did, you did the radiation. Well, I did the radiation mm -hmm. and then that caused menopause. Can't, yes. Can't, we can't glaze over menopause. Well, the hysterectomy is part of that too. Part of that. No, because they kept my ovaries intact. That's right. That's right. So the ovaries was because I'm young. They're going to spare me. They didn't spare anything. <laughs> the radiation <laughs> they fried didn't spare the ovaries me either. and I lost my crap. <laughs> there's no, there's just not. Yeah. It it's, wasn't pretty. It, it's very hard watching our loved one go through those just highs and lows of menopause and most people go into menopause kind of like this you know that she went mm -hmm. just straight into it mm -hmm. no gradual so uh it's a it's hard it's an hard it's a hard adjustment uh, mm -hmm. that she's still making i guess to this mm -hmm. day it's been quite some time um so that was radiation yep um after that 30 day cycle, so that would have been from probably November to December, the end of December, I had a little break. Mm -hmm. January, the end of January, or February, I started my next chemo, which would be the intense chemo where y'all saw the video head shaving. So it was kind of, that was at the end of my journey, right? Cause I had already been to the surgery, the radiation, the chemo, and now it's like I was starting over. Because mm -hmm. now I'm looking really sick, but mm -hmm. it was supposed to be the tail end. Yep. So, so as you saw in the video, we we rallied around her and shaved mm -hmm. her, shaved her head, mm -hmm. which was an emotional mo moment for all of us. Mm -hmm. Like I said, really no, no idea what to expect in that process. Not something you ever think about doing. 
never once thought about shaving my wife's head. So no, and so when we re I rewatch it, and I'm like, what was so funny? Like, what was was I laughing at? I don't. I think it was a shaving job. Like <laughs> your boy is awful. I've gotten better. <laughs> I've got somebody better. said take the blade off don't worry about it it fell off it, it did it did you know I was nervous I just wanted it to be a nice memory for her and a nice time and obviously tried to insert some joy and and and, and fun mm -hmm. into that mm -hmm. um it was memorable yeah was so a sweet moment our it, babies y'all wait till you see them now like that was two three <laughs> years ago they're so big yes yes a facial hair two of them are taller than me um, but yeah, so it's, it's been quite a journey and that was very fun to film. And again, that was just for ourselves. Mm -hmm. Um, so she, she finished all her treatments, did a graduation on. By myself, y'all. Well, COVID, COVID came. Uh, so nobody was allowed to go mm -hmm. with her, which was such a sad time. There's so many people mm -hmm. out there that experienced this and. People. I mean, I know they had it way worse, like loved ones. Oh, yeah, deathbeds and whatnot. Yeah. So please don't. <laughs> yeah. I had it. The, going to my last chemo by myself wasn't the worst. So they, they, lie, we, they, they FaceTimed me, and she rang the bell and did all that stuff and got all the, the cheering. Um, and after that, it was just a series of scans. Um, so she scanned. Kind of. Like at that point... I call it the catch and release program. <laughs> so now they've clipped the fin and I'm like learning how to swim in life again. But, you know, I'm still on my scan schedule every three months, I think. Or we were at six months because I didn't want all that excessive radiation. Mm -hmm. You know, why are y'all going to fry me unnecessarily? If there's mm -hmm. no cancer and I'm clearing, let's just push it back a little. And they agreed. So we went six months out. Mm -hmm. Went six months out, had about... Four scans, all of which showed no evidence mm -hmm. of disease, and we celebrated every time. Of course, mm -hmm. there was anxiety leading into it. Every time. And then celebration afterward. Uh, this will bring us into round two. Yeah, so December 10th, she went for a scan, and it was clear, but she was experiencing, so that was in, what, 21? December 10th? This past yeah, December, so yeah. December just passed. She so went I for, had my Moffitt scan clear. Mm -hmm, everything was clear. Everything was good, but she started experiencing some abdominal pain and uh one day it got so intense and this is a girl that has a high pain tolerance there's no doubt like i've never seen her wince at a needle or surgery or nothing um and she was in pain so mm -hmm. she went to the er which mm -hmm. again was surprising she the last mm -hmm. place she wanted to be was er mm -hmm. and that was on december 17th seven days after that scan especially for stomach pain because you know he's like you can't go to the hospital for every little pain i'm like babe i know i know like, we got to learn how to life after cancer. Yeah. But stomach pain, I'm like, mess around and go. And they're like, you're constipated. I would have been so embarrassed. So I put it <laughs> off again. Like, And, you know, when you get pain, you assume, she was doing this already, assuming it was cancer somewhere else. I got neck pain. Got this pain. It's cancer. And I it was my third trip to the ER, y'all. <laughs> Over the forgot. ER, you know. Yeah, I forgot. I had neck cancer once, I thought. <laughs> right. So, I mean, totally get it. Totally understand. I, I'm, I'm the biggest hypochondriac in the world, so I get it. So when she went to the ER, um, they decided to give her a CT scan, even though she just had one seven days prior. And it was interesting because they came to her and said, okay, you're, you're all good. Everything looks good. Um, you're free to go. And as she was packing up, that's how I remember it. Well, almost because they were like, we ran the scan and we see something. So we, we'd like to run you again with the contrast. And I'm uh -huh. like, there goes the two flipping scans I withheld. You know, I should have scanned every three months, but fine. We're not talking about that. So they run me through with contrast, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's fine. You're good. You're good to go. So I'm like, I'm good, babe. I'm good. Oh. Now they came back like, uh-oh. <laughs> As you come back, uh-oh, sit down. Did they give you more? I feel like it was at two times they were like, no. And then a men a mendum came through, and they're like, they just print out the paper and they're like, holy cancer or whatever. We could talk to your team. We have a team. I'm like, y'all are not right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you just, just scanned clear. 10 days ago. So, seven days. Seven so I was days. right. The, the, the basic of the story was nothing's wrong. She was about to leave. And yeah. We were relieved. And um, and then they said, well, hold on, sit down. Found something. Need to 
need to scan you again. So they gave her the multiple contrasts, mm-hmm. right? The it, yeah, like um, the IV and the oral. Yeah, and it, then it was discovered that she had a I think it was six centimeters at that time, or was yeah. it eight? Yeah, six, six. centimeter tumor in her uh, abdomen, uh, and they were like it's colon cancer, some kind of cancer, mm-hmm. um, and they were recommending like stuff immediately to be treated there. Um, mm-hmm. We wanted to obviously speak with Moffitt. Mm-hmm. And as it turns out, that tumor was in all of the previous four scans since her completion, treatment completion. They had just been missing it. Um, you can go all the way back to two centimeters growth. You can see it at two centimeters mm-hmm. and then it continued to grow. Yeah. It was even, it was six centimeters on the 10th. Right. And then eight centimeters on the seventh. So it was growing rapidly. Um, I mean, I do love Moffat. I don't want to. It's, we had to drop all the negativity because it's very frustrating to hold on to the what ifs and you only have one jab. But it is like nestled up to an intestine and, you know, your intestines constantly moving. So it's, it tucks and folds. But in retrospect, it's still visible. So it was a justifiable mistake in a way like understandable although so they say yeah we're not there yet. yeah yeah <laughs> still trying to reconcile that um and still processing that and all the what ifs and i mean at the but end, it's it's good then there's nothing nothing you can do um so we had a biopsy shortly after uh the discovery this was all December 17th, December. it started December 22nd or 3rd, we were in the hospital biopsying, unbeknownst to our kids, yes. because it's, we're it's Christmas, we're not wanting to get them upset, so we're, we're holding on to this thing. I'm not tying this trauma to that season. Right. Like, I did not want that for them. Right, so so we had to hold on to that and, and celebrate Christmas, and new. I think it was until after New Year's mm-hmm. that we decided to finally sit down, sit them down and and tell them what was going on and that. And we wanted to wait for the biopsy, even though we knew. Yeah, yeah. But. Um, and that, that that tumor was confirmed to be carcinosarcoma metastasized. Mm-hmm. So then she was diagnosed with stage four uh, cancer and has been receiving treatments mm-hmm. since. So the hope, of, our hope initially was that she would receive treatments, shrink the tumor, and then have the tumor removed, similar to what the first situation standard, standard care, care yeah. yeah but unfortunately based on the location which she probably knows more about than i do uh at least medical terms do you remember well the term i'm seeing on my forms is the lower mesentery which i've never even heard of but it's like a intestine fold and it's right by other organs yeah so i imagine that's where it gets tricky yeah for so the surgeon. so going in there for surgery is kind of tricky also when you've had metastasized cancer you risk spreading it further i I guess guess stepping on an ant pile i don't know i was thinking more it was a dandelion you blow and it kind of spreads out yeah yeah yeah. so i was just thinking dandelions are beautiful ants are angry (laughs) fair enough fair enough i I like your analogy I, i go with yours um so at that time the prognosis was a little unsure um they started chemo uh they they're not doing radiation this time around i guess you can't I, it's my understanding radiation is more of a one and done because it is so intense and it, it you're microwaving your organs. So mm. um, it's a very hard place to be because I'm noticing the effects from treatment taking its toll on my body. Mm-hmm. And <sighs> what do you do? So she, so they started her on chemotherapy again, basically the same uh Program she was on before, right? The same intense. What, carbo- what were they? Carbo, carbo, te- carbo, splat, platin, carbo, something. Carbo, platin, and taxol, and taxol. something. But and, and they added ab- one more. Avastin. Avastin, which and, deals with the blood. Yeah, and then all the other stuff. Again, we're back to every three weeks, twelve hour day, uh, you know, to and from uh, Moffitt. Getting those treatments, and the hope again was to shrink the tumor, maybe perform surgery. Surgery is not an option, unfortunately. So, mm-hmm. uh, of course, she lost her hair again. So we shaved her head again. Uh, My fil- son gently shaved yes, it. Yes, it was a sweet time again. Um, we filmed it, but it wasn't as 
entertaining because it's kind of just used to it. You know? We made a super cool reel, but Instagram pulled the audio. So if y'all tried to watch it, it makes no sense right yeah. now. Yeah, it was <laughs> it was a cool it was a cool reel. I'll, I'll play the clip over us here, but um, just a kind of a before and after of her, uh, which I thought was really cool. Um, so again, unfortunately, treatment's not an option for her, so she'll have to continue with. Well, treatment. The radiation treatment. Treatment's not an option. Um, surgery's not an option. Radiation surgery's, surgery's not, an not an option. Radiation's not an option. Um, the maintenance is what they would like to keep me on lifetime. Um, Basically, that means she'll be getting chemo in order to keep that tumor at bay and keep the cancer at bay for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't know what that means. It could be 100 years. It yeah, because be... we, I mean, that's not a question we're ready to ask yet. Like, yeah. We've never asked prognosis. We've Googled we kind of know especially when you have your team like i don't see enough for you to know like lie to me doc please <laughs> so the prayers are amazing because i truly feel like the lord's patient because nobody knows what to do with this cancer uh instagram follower did put me onto a facebook page and that was a huge blessing oh yeah because i did see the oh. long-term survivor i mean it's depressing because they're losing their loved ones daily on it mm -hmm. But I did get to see that there is length of years past five. So that was encouraging. Yeah, because the, the Google prognosis is about five years. Mm -hmm. um, even on the, the websites dedicated to this kind of cancer is about you know five years or so. Uh, but again, in her group, we're seeing long-term survivors with multiple reoccurrences. Mm -hmm. Same scenario, similar scenario as hers. Um, so that's where we're at today. Mm -hmm. That's where you find us today is, um, did you, you just had a treatment recently? Yeah. A chemo. And so that one's just a short 30 minutes. I did feel minimal side effects, although <laughs> hearing loss can be one of them. And my ears rang a few times. Was it anxiety? I don't know. <laughs> but I don't want to camp out on medicine for the rest of my life. You know, we're so conflicted. Mm -hmm. But... I mean, I want to live. Yes. So the only sort of proven uh, treatment is what we're doing now. It's the only one that has any clinical evidence that it works for this kind of cancer. Mm -hmm. Not to say there aren't others that probably work, just there's for no sure. research. So, uh, so that's where we're at today. And uh, mm -hmm. we'll continue for, into the future. The beautiful thing about this current chemotherapy is because it's low dose and the type it is, she gets to grow her hair back, as you can see there. Mm -hmm. um, Y'all were so sweet. I did grow some beautiful curls. Some they were people nice. were like, it may grow back curly. It was curly. Mm -hmm. It was so fun being bald because it was nice and cool. And my head was a perfect shape. So <laughs> thank you nice. guys she, for that. She looked good. It was cold a lot. She was always looking for... Oh my gosh, it's cold. You don't realize your ears. Bald folks, I feel for you. <laughs> Nobody tells you about the neck and ears. Yes. So, um, so yeah. So we go about our daily life as positively as possible. We live in the moment as much as possible. Mm -hmm. um, we do as much as possible together as a family. You know, we, we we go out as much as we can. She has always been this way, anyways. But even more so since she's been sick. She's very family focused, and it doesn't matter if it's one in the morning, whatever the time it is. She'll spend as much time as she can with the kids and. Those are some of the sweet side effects mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. this situation is that, you know, I value my time with her more because I don't know how much more time I got with her. Um, so, you know, it's not perfect. Don't, don't want to say that. It's like any marriage uh, has it. Why'd you chuckle? Excuse me. <laughs> oh. Side effect. Side effect. <laughs> uh, so, but we, it, that is the sweetest thing. It's just the... It's so cliche, right? Live each moment as it's your last. But it's really true at that point, like when you're facing this road, it's like, mm -hmm. yeah, mm -hmm. if I'm feeling well today, I'm going to make today count. Even if I'm not feeling my best, I could get worse. Like, you know, I may be immobile one day. I may mm -hmm. have to have multiple surgeries that are going to cause more problems. Mm -hmm. So if I could walk, your girl is walking. 
Yep. And life is much more joyous in that regard. And, mm -hmm. and if there's anything you can take away from this, maybe that's it, is to, to live in the moment. You know, the Bible says you're not promised tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Life's a vapor. It can go in a flash. Mm -hmm. You may not go from cancer. You may not have mm -hmm. the opportunity to know that your time is limited yeah. as we do. Right. Die in a car accident. As we've lost multiple friends who were just broken over my diagnosis yes. and I'm like they had no idea they were going for I mean we had no idea they were going mm. first but yeah I've been well. to four or five funerals this year already so friends of mine a couple of them in the same month so yeah. uh live each moment like it's your last and consider your eternity to end this on a oh, for sure. ministerial Absolutely. note consider your eternity this is all temporary and uh Eternity is forever. Uh, so if you don't know Jesus, I, I suggest that you do. Knowing him has given us the greatest comfort. The, mm -hmm. the amount of grace that he's given us to go through such a thing mm -hmm. can only be supernatural. And, and the hope that we have in the future that we will reunite again someday, no matter what happens. Mm -hmm. And that uh, we can spend that eternity together uh, with joy, no more pain, no more sorrow, no more suffering. And we look forward to that. So uh, thank you guys so much for all mm -hmm. your comments and your support yeah. and your love. I know this was a long video, but uh, we've been wanting to make it. And it's really fun for us to kind of just sit here and, and, and talk and share our story. So if you have questions, let us know. Mm -hmm. We'd love to answer you. Um, I don't know how to end, it, end the video other than to say we love you guys. Thank you we so much. You guys. Thank you.